Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ, and today I'm going to talk about SafeMoon. So, one cryptocurrency which is really taking over social media is a cryptocurrency called SafeMoon. I've been asked by friends and family and a few people on social media, you know, what are my thoughts on SafeMoon? Have I traded it? Am I investing in it? You know, what are my thoughts on it? So, I decided to make go ahead and make a video since it has been something that's been coming up a lot on social media and even other YouTubers doing videos on it. Now, granted, I'm not a huge fan of cryptocurrencies in general. I'm not a person that trades in and out of stocks or cryptocurrencies. Like if I'm interested in something, more than likely I'm going to hold long term as a long term investor. That's my main strategies. While I do do some trading, most of my investments are long term investments. And so with cryptocurrencies, once you dig into all of the ICOs, the initial coin offerings and altcoins, as they're also called, I don't really go deep into those areas. And so when I first heard of SafeMoon, I automatically figured it was just, you know, the latest hot cryptocurrency at the moment and that it's probably going to go up and down and be very volatile. And it's probably not something that if you're actually looking to invest long term, it's not something that you want to mess with. You know, if you really want to get into cryptocurrencies, you can look at what the top two or even the top five or top 10 cryptocurrencies are. And more than likely, those are going to stay in the top two, top five. So Bitcoin is the number one. It was the first cryptocurrency. And then many other cryptocurrencies, including Ethereum, which is the second most popular cryptocurrency at the moment, many people started to create their own cryptocurrencies. Now, some cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin being the number one and Ethereum being the number two, those were actually created to try and solve a real world issue. But cryptocurrencies like Dogecoin, they it was literally created as a joke. Now, maybe some of the other cryptocurrencies weren't, but Dogecoin specifically was created as a joke. It wasn't created to solve any real world problems or concerns. It was literally created just to say that someone created a cryptocurrency and it took the name of a meme that was already out. Some may tell you that they're trying to solve some real world issue. Some will straight up tell you that it is a joke, it's a joke coin, but others are kind of in that gray area where you don't know if they're trying to create something for to solve an actual issue or if they're just creating it for a pump and dump. So this takes us to Safe Moon. Is Safe Moon safe? Is it a scam? Is it a pyramid scheme? Is it the next big cryptocurrency? Is it going to make you a millionaire in the next year or two or 20 years from now? Well, if you're already in it, it may be too late for you. Or if you didn't get in on it early, it may be too late for you to actually make any money based solely off of who has been promoting it and what I actually see on their website when I review their site. And so I'm going to talk about some of those details, get into the white paper that they that all cryptocurrencies create to kind of describe the reason for creating their cryptocurrency and tell you why I don't believe it's a good long term investment. So first, let's take a look at their website and let's just look at the first sentence on their website. Now, the first sentence says the Safe Moon protocol is a community driven, fair launched DeFi token. Three simple functions occur during each trade, reflection, LP acquisition, and burn. Now, what does all of that even mean? Not much. It's very vague. It's three things that don't really mean anything when you think about what you know about cryptocurrencies or what you may know about investing in stocks or what you may know about currencies in general. And so let's break down those three functions as they describe them on their website. So number one is reflection. And the description of reflection is holders earn passive rewards through static reflection as they watch their balance of Safe Moon grow indefinitely. So your balance of Safe Moon grows indefinitely, but does the value of your Safe Moon also grow indefinitely? And they're using the word indefinitely, meaning there's no definite timeline. Uh, technically, the stock market can grow indefinitely. So using very vague terms, uh, you know, if you're not actually doing your research, this may be something that sounds good, but it doesn't really mean anything. And so this actually reminds me of a great quote from one of my friends. Uh, we were in college and we were talking about, you know, how many pushups we can do. So one person says, oh, I can do 20 pushups. You know, I'm like, oh, I can do between 30 and 45 pushups at once. Somebody else is like, oh, I can do 50. Another person, oh, I can do 100. And then one of my friends says, oh, I can do infinity. And we're all looking at him like, uh, okay, like, what do you mean? You can't do an unlimited amount of push ups. And then he's like, well, the only limit is time. And so while we were thinking about how many push ups we can do 
straight without stopping, we didn't set any parameters as far as how much time we would give someone to do push-ups. So of course, he could do an indefinite amount of push-ups because we don't know how long he could continue to do push-ups. We didn't talk about not taking breaks. He could do one push-up every minute for the rest of his life. And we don't know, we don't have a definite timeline of one, how long he's gonna live. And then also a timeline of, you know, how many push-ups can he do within the time period from now until you know he passes away so it was a great answer you know it was thinking outside of the box but this is also thinking outside of the box by saying hey your safe moon tokens can grow indefinitely so while his answer was true and while it's true that the tokens can grow indefinitely it doesn't mean that the value of your holdings is actually going to increase indefinitely. And so number two is LP acquisition. So every trade contributes towards automatically generating liquidity that goes into multiple pools used by exchanges. The current amount of liquidity can be viewed on their website. For those unfamiliar, liquidity means the efficiency or ease of which an asset or security can be converted into ready cash without affecting its market price. So given that definition, that means cash would be the most liquid asset and other assets there will liquidity would vary based on how quickly you can turn that asset or that product or that property if it's real estate how quickly you can turn that into cash so i'll give an example if you wanted to buy a pair of sneakers that pair of sneakers is 200 dollars, but you didn't have any cash at the moment all you had was another pair of sneakers and that pair of sneakers was 300 dollars now the person that you're trying to get the $200 pair of sneakers from, they don't want to trade because they don't like, you know, your $300 pair of sneakers, even though the value is higher, either they don't like it or they really just want the cash. They don't want another pair of sneakers as a trade. So now you have to go and find a buyer to give you $300 for those sneakers. Now, although the fair market value the quote unquote value of those sneakers is $300. It doesn't mean that you can easily get $300 for those sneakers. You know, it may take you time to find someone locally. Um, if you're gonna sell it online, it may take a couple of days before someone buys it off of eBay or StockX or GOAT. And then you have to ship it. You may not get paid immediately. Uh, once you actually do get paid, by the platform that you use or by the individual person if you sell to someone locally or, di or directly, that could still take anywhere from a couple of days to maybe a week if you have to transfer from the payment account that you receive from the platform that you use and then transfer it to your bank account and then actually take the money out of an ATM or at the bank. And so th that time frame could range anywhere from a couple of minutes if you already know a buyer who's ready to give you $300 for those sneakers up to maybe a week or more depending on if you have to sell it on a platform and ha maybe have to wait a couple of days to sell it and then a couple more days to receive the funds and be able to take that money out. And so that sneaker, depending on what it is, it may not be as liquid as some other sneaker or some other product where you can easily get that $300 quickly. And so if you wanna get it quicker, what you could do is you could sell those $300 pair of sneakers at a discount. That may make the process faster as far as how quickly you're able to sell it because maybe someone locally is willing to pay 250 for the sneakers and they'll do it right now, but they're not willing to pay 300. It may take you longer to find someone to give you that fair value. And so that's the same thing with cryptocurrencies or even stocks. Uh, just because the current value may say that it's a certain price, it doesn't mean that there's a buyer available at that very moment to buy it for that price. And so whenever you trade SafeMoon, there's a certain amount of that trade or a certain amount of tokens that go towards that liquidity pool to make it easier for you to trade in and out of SafeMoon. And the longer it takes for you to sell an asset, that means the, the more illiquid that asset is. And so the total market cap of SafeMoon is currently 1.6 trillion at the timing of this video. And the liquidity pool is around 60 million. And so because I haven't personally traded SafeMoon, I don't know how quickly or how that would affect the speed at which you can buy SafeMoon to get in and out of a trade, but you probably wouldn't want to get in and out of this trade anyway. And I'll talk more about that later in the video. And so the third statement was about burn. So it says it's a community driven and fair launch. The dev team burned all of their tokens and participated with everyone else. So that's still a very vague statement. 
they're trying to say that you know they made it fair that you know all of the devs didn't have the token super early and then they got the lower price and they say that they started with everyone else well what point was everyone else and who was everyone else we don't know unless you were in on the initial coin offering you just happened to know that it was coming out or you got a, a notice ahead of time then you would be one of those people but it wouldn't be everyone else it would just be whoever knew about it at that time period and whoever knew about it just because they're not the dev team doesn't mean that they're not you know close friends and family or whatever the case may be or no, another business that they tried to get uh, to invest in safe moon and so if I compared it to the stock market, you could compare this to like with an initial public offering of a stock. And so usually people who have already owned the company when it was private, maybe they were the CEO, maybe they were another higher executive, or maybe they're just an employee of the company, they probably already have shares at a very low price before it goes up to the IPO. And then there are other people who may have access to the IPO price so that they could get the price that they're selling the IPO shares at. And then there's everyone else that gets it once it actually opens to the market. Most of the time it's usually higher than whatever the IPO price is. And that could be a 10, 20, 50, maybe even 100% higher than what the people that got in at the IPO, not even considering the people who got even earlier, just because they were already either owners of that business or they were employees of that business and they were able to get shares earlier, even than the IPO. And so what they're saying is that, hey, even the CEO, they're coming in at the IPO price, just like anyone else that would have been able to get in on the IPO, or in this case, an ICO, initial coin offering. And despite the very vague description about this coin on their website, so as you can see on the site, over 2 million people already own Safecoin, and there's already $1.6 trillion worth of money put into Safecoin. And that's a huge amount of money, but you know, more on that later. You can also see that over 419 billion tokens have been burned. Now that's a lot of tokens that have been burned, but it's not a lot once you consider how many coins will actually be available to the public. But more on that later as well. Uh, first, I want to go into the roadmap that they show on their website as well for 2021. And so for Q1, it says protocol initialized. Uh, somehow this is linked to Dogecoin and they have a marketing campaign behind it. Okay, I guess, you know, Dogecoin is a joke coin. And so if you would want to link your coin to Dogecoin, that means your coin is probably a joke as well. Uh, Q2, the initial push. Uh, th they talk about tokenomics, which I'll get into later as well. Th the tokenomics integration will be completed and they expect completion of the SafeMoon app, wallet and game or games. Uh, they plan on integrating with African markets, setting up a charity, opening a UK slash Ireland office and blah, blah, blah. Nothing of real substance here either. Q3 holding the line, uh, finishing up the educational app, beginning their charity project releasing a video game with SafeMoon integrated, yada yada. Nothing really important there as well, other than you know the quote of holding the line, they want you to hold. Uh, and then Q4, going to the moon. Uh, finish exchange, finish the project, finish integrations, create an African-based SafeMoon office and create jobs there. Oh, and SafeMoon scholarship, don't forget that. Now, whenever someone says that they're going to do X, Y, and Z in Africa, like it's not the largest continent in the world and there are multiple countries in the continent of Africa, I don't really take them serious because you could have easily said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be in a specific country. You could have named one Nigeria, South Africa, you know, whatever the country was, instead of saying, I'm going to do something in Africa. Now, perfect example is that in their roadmap in the Q2 section, they mentioned opening an office in the UK slash Ireland. Now you could have been just as specific by selecting a, a country in Africa as you did as picking a country in Europe. But instead of saying you're gonna open a, an office in Europe, you said the actual specific country. And so I'm always a little weary whenever someone does something like that. You're just using words that are very popular. You know, it sounds good when you're trying to do something for people in Africa. People are always creating charities for someone in Africa and you keep it super vague. Don't really give any details, just like most of their website so far anyway. 
And the same, you wouldn't do it for Asia and say, hey, I'm going to open an office in Asia. You're going to say whether it's China or Japan or Singapore or wherever. You're going to say that specific country at least, if not a specific city that you plan to open an office in. And so obviously, I don't really take most of their statements as being something of substance. They're all pretty vague and it doesn't really tell you about how it's going to help SafeMoon. But let's push forward to the many reasons why I personally would not put my money in SafeMoon. And so they talk about the word tokenomics. You can think of that, or I'm assuming that is the token economics. They combined it together, they created tokenomics. Now what this actually relates to is the selling of tokens within SafeMoon. And so whenever you sell SafeMoon, there's a 10% network fee. And that's a pretty high fee. You know, imagine that you're buying a stock and every time you buy the stock, you have to pay 10% in fees. Right now, most trading platforms don't have a fee. It's free to trade. I actually did a review of a lot of free trading apps. You can check that out. While cryptocurrencies are currently charging fees and usually the miners, like in the case of Bitcoin or in the case of Ethereum, there's gas. Those go back to the people that are supporting the network. And so it's very similar in this case with SafeMoon as well. Half of that 10%, 5% is going to go to the other holders of SafeMoon. And so if you're still holding SafeMoon and someone else trades out, you will get a little bit of those of that fee, which will be evenly spread out to all of the holders based on how much SafeMoon you hold. And then that other half, the other 5%, is going to the liquidity pool to make it easy for people to trade in and out of SafeMoon. And so if you're an early adopter or you just happen to have a lot of SafeMoon, then the majority of that 5% fees that's going to other SafeMoon holders will go to you. Now this seems really sketchy and this is what really makes me think of it as a pyramid scheme. Because if you think about it, when you start a pyramid scheme or even like a multi-level marketing uh, scheme or plan, the people at the top are the ones who benefit the most. And the people at the top are the people who got in the earliest. And so if those network fees are being evenly spread out based on how many tokens you have, the earlier you got in, the more tokens you more than likely have, unless you just decided as soon as you started, you're just gonna buy up a whole bunch of tokens. And there's a lot of tokens available out there, which is another problem that I'll talk about. And so that 10% fee, it's large enough to where that if you ever decide to get in Safe Moon, it'll probably slow you down from thinking about uh, selling, or at least you'll wait until you've made a significant amount more. That way that 10% fee doesn't cut into your actual gains. And so you'd have to make almost 110 dollars in order just to break even if you put a hundred dollars in safe moon because once you sell you're going to lose 10 percent of that value in that actual closing trade and the price of safe moon is super super low and when i say super super low i mean it's not like you know one cent it's not over a dollar it's like point zero 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 three five um, and I'll give you an exact number, but whenever you see a number like that, especially dealing with cryptocurrencies, you kind of think that, oh, I got in really early because the price is super low and people's natural expectation is that it's going to go to a dollar at some point and it may not go to a dollar. And here's why. So the current value of each coin is 0 0.0000032. That's five zeros and then three two. So it seems like you're on the ground floor because it's really low. It hasn't even gotten up to one cent per token. And you know maybe people have dreams that at some point it's gonna reach a dollar and then that's when they're gonna sell. But chances are it's never gonna reach a dollar. And here's why. Uh, using Bitcoin as an example, Bitcoin has 21 million tokens. That is the most amount of Bitcoins that will be available once all, of, all Bitcoins are actually out and available for use. And each coin is around about $35,000 at the time that I recorded this video. And so that brings the total market cap to $649 billion. And Bitcoin is the largest cryptocurrency out of all cryptocurrencies, meaning it has the most money within Bitcoin. It has the most value over every other cryptocurrency, including Ethereum. And if it were to maintain the same price, it would be $735 billion market cap 
once all 21 million are available. Give or take, depending on how much prices rise up and down, but maybe around that range. Now, like I said, Bitcoin has 21 million tokens, but SafeMoon has one quadrillion tokens. One quadrillion. That's a one, comma, and then 15 zeros behind it. Now with 21 million, there are six zeros behind that 21. So if you look at these numbers next to each other, you see that stark difference between the one quadrillion versus 21 million tokens. And this is why the cost per token is so low because there are so many tokens out there. And SafeMoon started out with a price of 0 0.000000000055. So that's nine zeros behind the decimal and then five five. And that was on March 9th of this year, 2021. Now at the time of this recording, the market cap was about 1.8 billion. And if SafeMoon maintained its price, once all tokens were available, price per token, then the total value would be around $3 billion. And so because the current price has five decimal points behind the zero, that means it would have to grow by 100,000 times its current value in order to reach a dollar. Now, the only reason I use the dollar as the example is because people naturally, like it's like a psychological thing where you like to use whole numbers. So whether you're thinking about it or if you're thinking about it right now, if you just looked at the price, you're like, okay, once it reaches a dollar, since I got in at whatever price, then I'm gonna make X amount of dollars and I'm, you know, I'm gonna be rich. I'm gonna be a millionaire or potentially a billionaire. It's probably not gonna happen because there are one quadrillion tokens. And just for SafeMoon to reach the same market cap that Bitcoin currently holds, the price of SafeMoon would have to reach 0.00065. That alone would be a 20,000% increase in its value. But in order to reach a dollar, it would have to increase by 31 million percent. Now this is essentially unattainable and maybe some people out there who are maybe safe moon holders are like, well, it doesn't have to reach a dollar. I can still make money if it goes up. Yeah, you could, you can make money on pretty much anything. Now, theoretically speaking, if everyone that has money in cryptocurrency were to actually move from whatever the other cryptocurrency is into safe moon, then the price might go up to 0.00143. So if you're thinking safe moon is going to go to the moon and reach what, well, a dollar which would be going to the moon at this point then pretty much think again if you look at a chart right now you can see that it's been on a downward trend ever since maybe a month or two after it initially launched and so the chances of it even reaching its peak a couple months ago is very very rare now just like any other cryptocurrency on the market or any other asset even within the stock market the price at any given time is really just based on what someone else is willing to pay for it. Not only difference with cryptocurrencies and especially cryptocurrencies that don't even try to resolve some real world issue is that there is nothing to look forward to. The only thing you can look forward to is trading it, selling it to someone else for a higher price and hoping that someone's going to want it in the future because they have the same expectation that you had that it's going to go reach a dollar or it's going to reach you know, 500, 1,000% gain within some period of time. So that doesn't mean that you can't make money at all. You can, al you can always trade short term if you're a trader and you know how to trade, you know how to look at indicators, you know how to look at support and resistance, you know the psychology behind people looking for even numbers or whole numbers, then you know, you could make some money trading in and out. But if you're doing that, you're getting charged 10% fee every time that you make a trade and so maybe it's not even worth it unless you're getting in and out very quickly and making large gains at the same time so just like any other cryptocurrency whether it's doge or it's bitcoin if you get enough people to get into it then and you get in before them then of course there's an opportunity for you to make money but that to me sounds like a pyramid scheme it sounds like a multi-level marketing campaign basically the people who get in the earliest are the most likely to actually ever make any money. And the later you're in, the more likely you're gonna lose money. And because it doesn't even attempt to solve any real, real world issues, then you can't even think of it like a Bitcoin or, or an Ethereum where people are actually gonna use it for 
product, either buying products and services or creating products like NFTs and things of that nature through Ethereum. But no matter what decision you make, it's important that you put it into context, especially the price of SafeMoon. If you think you're getting in very early just because of the price of the coin, you might want to think again because of the vast number of coins that are available. One quadrillion, again, that's one with 15 zeros behind it. That's more money than there is on planet Earth. Whether you're counting the US dollar, you count the yen, you add up all of the currencies in the world and it doesn't add up to one quadrillion. So even if after listening to this video, you still decide you wanna get in, you still think it's for you and it's something that you wanna put your money in, just make sure you do your research, make sure you pay close attention to it. I personally wouldn't recommend it, but if that's something that you wanna put your money in, I can't stop you. So, but if you really wanna think about long-term and maintaining your wealth, you might want to focus on the stock market if you're going to do cryptocurrencies maybe bitcoin maybe ethereum and maybe a few others out there as well but any coin that's linking itself to dogecoin dogecoin being one that has stated that it was created as a joke if you're going to link yourself to a coin like that then we know that your coin more than likely is a joke as well now there's so much more I could probably say about Safe Moon, but honestly, it's not really worth it. Uh, if you've seen other videos out there, I'm not sure whether people are saying positive things or negative things, but in my opinion, it's not something that I would wanna put my money in, especially if I actually plan on taking some value out of it sometime in the future. So are you currently a SafeMoon user or a bag holder? Are you planning on buying SafeMoon? After watching this video, did I potentially change your mind based on my opinion of SafeMoon? Let me know what you think about SafeMoon in the comments below. Maybe something that you can say might change my opinion. Probably not, but you know, I always look at the comments and I, I plan to respond to comments as well. If you have any further questions, you can put those in the comments as well. If you'd like to invest in maybe a safer cryptocurrency, you might want to try Coinbase. I actually have a referral link to Coinbase. If you'd like to try that out, you can buy Bitcoin, you can buy Ethereum, and you can buy other coins which Coinbase may deem more safe or maybe coins that actually attempt to solve some real world issue. They don't put every coin on Coinbase and so that's one great way that you can use to filter out whether something is a cryptocurrency that could actually be worth something in the future. They can help you filter those out. All right, thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video, I really appreciate it. If you're not a current member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you really like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video just like this. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day.